Hello, I'm Andrew Chidji, an air plant enthusiast living in Thailand. I'm putting together this series of videos to help people understand more about air plants, uh, which are amazing uh, little plants which can grow in many different locations in your home or garden. So in this particular video, I'm going to be taking a further look at some of the species and varieties of air plants, which you may be able to find. Some of them are more difficult to find, you can't find them everywhere, um, but even so I think it's quite interesting to know more about them. So in the first video on varieties, I um, talked about some of the more commonly available air plants. Um, some of these that I'm going to show you today are not so commonly available. So let me just dive in and start talking you through some of these. Um, there's quite a lot of noise around, there are birds in the trees, there are geckos chirping, um, there's also, it's also market day so there are going to be tuk-tuks and all sorts of things going by. So there is a little bit of noise in the background. Okay, so let's start here. Um, I just first want to um, talk about some of these um, amazing air plants which I've got on the table. Um, in the last video I showed you a small juncia, um, which is a grass-like air plant. This is a giant form of juncia, um, which is, is not so easy to find. Um, it's got quite spectacular leaf display um, and you know, it, it, um, it likes to grow in, in rocky places outside. I don't think this one grows very well inside. Um, I've got it perched in a, in a small shallow pot uh, hanging up outside. Um, when you're watering this one you need to be careful that uh, the water doesn't gather and stay inside and rot the plant. Um, but it's, it's, it's really pretty actually. Um, so that's a large form of juncea that I think quite a lot of people may not have seen. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you now two different forms of anhininji. <laughs> two different forms of anhininji. Um, this is the large form, um, so you can get the large form and the small form. Uh, this is the large form which has uh, larger leaves and is larger than the, the other form. Um, this is the small form, which you can see has smaller leaves. Very similar shape in terms of form, uh, but the size is different clearly. Uh, so it's coalescent, it grows along a stem and the leaves grow up the stem. Um, this one has been flowering, as you can see. Um, one of the flowers has actually uh, now started to wither, but there's another one here, there's another one coming. A uh, really pretty little plant. Um, named after uh, one of the botanists who discovered it. Uh, so that's Van Heninji. Not so easy to find this one, um, but, but something that a lot of collectors of Tillandsias, uh, serious collectors, really like to, to find. Okay, um, this one here is uh, a form of Funkiana. Um, it likes to grow on trees uh, in its natural habitat. Um, this one can grow quite quickly and it starts to sprout and stem off and um, I'll, I'll put a close-up of this but you, you will be able to see that there are lots of sproutings of, um, of little branches and, um, and leaves here. Um, this one pups uh, so grows new uh, little plants quite easily. Um, often people like to put it on pieces of wood like this that can then hang up because that mimics its natural habitat. So. Uh, Funkiana, and you can. In, I'll just put a picture from my book of uh, what it looks like when you've got a large Funkiana bush, uh, which is in flower, which is really spectacular. Okay, so um, I wanted to show that there are some different forms of Bulbosa, and also um, some hybrids from Bulbosa. So. Talansia growers, um, some of the specialists, really like to breed together different species of Talansia to get new and different and exciting uh, types of plants. Um, so this is a bulbosa that you'll quite often find in plant shops. You can see it's got this bulbous shape and I showed it in the previous video. This one is starting to flower here in the middle. Um, but you can also get very small forms of bulbosa. So if I just show you here, this is a clump of much smaller bulbosas. I'll put a close-up on the screen so you can see it properly. Um, but this is a, a clump of miniature uh, bulbosas. Um, so really pretty, uh, but different again. Um, so I just wanted to show that you can get many different types of 
uh, plants that grow in different ways, even within um, the different uh, species. And what I was going to do was also show you this, this plant which I found in Bangkok. So um, this one is a hybrid. It's called Talansia Showtime. Um, it's actually a hybrid of Streptophila. I've got a Streptophila here somewhere. So here we go. Here's a Streptophila. So the grower has hybridized Streptophila, uh, but also Bulbosa. So you can see if you look at this, it's got some of the form and shape of Bulbosa. Um, and it's also been combined then with Streptophila to produce this really interesting and attractive hybrid called Talansia Showtime. One of the reasons why growers like to produce hybrids is because you can get very big and interesting shapes in the plants by doing that. Here's another different type of plant. Um, this one is Talansia Shaidiana. Now this is a very drought tolerant plant. Um, so you can see it's coalescent, it grows up a stem, it's got these triangular leaves which are uh, arching inwards, uh, which growing up and around this, this, this stem. Um, quite wiry, um, quite strong, thick leaves. This can go a long time without watering this plant uh, and it's so yes it's very drought tolerant. Uh, it can also take a lot of sunlight because of the, the habitat where it grows naturally. So that's a good one if you, you live in a particularly um, hot place, I would say. Some others hanging up here that I'm going to show you. Right. This is Talansia pal palacia. Talansia palacia. Um, this is a really interesting and beautiful uh, shape, this plant. Um, it's, it's a sort of ivory green colour, grey green silvery colour. It's got very pronounced trichomes on its leaves. Um, it's from one original stem, but now the stem is shooting out uh, additional branches. Um, so this, um, much like the Shadiana, grows in um, very, very hot conditions and so it is quite drought tolerant and you need to be careful not to overwater this. Uh, so the leaves are very silvery, it's got very pronounced trichomes, it's developed to cope with uh, being in an environment where uh, there is not a lot of moisture around. So you mustn't water this one too much, um, but it's really pretty, a nice one to, to hang um, from uh, well, a pot or a wire or something like that. Uh, I talked in the other videos about how iron anthers can um, can pup and and therefore start to form balls of iron anthers over time. Here's a really good example of one of those. Um, so this is what can happen when you have uh, many iron anthers together, which pup at their base. You don't separate them; uh, they continue to grow, um, and they'll start to form. Um, group like this which is really very nice to see and you can hang that up somewhere in your garden to be enjoying the breeze and the sunlight as well. In a previous video I showed you a small form Girati and I'll just put a picture up to remind you. Um, this is actually a large form Girati uh, so as you can see it's a really quite large plant. It's, I would say it's spectacular, it's one of my favourites. Um, I got it here in um, Thailand. Um, so this plant grows on trees and it's got these curling leaves which grip onto uh, branches and twigs uh, in trees and, and that's where it stays and gathers its moisture and its nutrients from the air. Um, so a really quite interesting and unusual plant. Um, so yeah, you've got some new growth coming in, in terms of the leaves at the top um, and it's growing up this stem. Um, very arched. Uh, steeply arched leaves um, and very pronounced trichomes on here. Um, so this can cope with strong sunlight and also uh, with not so much water. Um, so really beautiful plant, not so easy to get hold of one this size if you're not living in a place like Thailand, but very interesting to see nevertheless. Of course you can get these in 
um, South America in particular, where they will grow in their natural habitat. Okay, I just wanted to show you um, a couple more. Um, this one is a beautiful plant. It's a hybrid of Tillandsia concolor and Tillandsia fasciculata. Uh, so chiquensis is what the, the grower has called it. Um, so this is, um, it's got a beautiful shape. It's very symmetrical, this plant. Uh, it's got new growth in the middle. It's got these long triangular leaves uh, and it's very pleasing to look at actually. Um, so, so yes, that's a, an interesting hybrid. Um, you will come across, uh, as if you visit air plant specialists, many, many different types of hybrids and um, you can't possibly expect to know or understand all of them. Um, but it's very interesting to see what sort of plants people have produced and, um, and also what they are. Uh, so finally, I was just thought I'd show you um, here um, one more thing, which is I showed you Intermedia last time. Um, this, um, these two little Intermedia plants um, were part of an enormous bush of Intermedia plants, which I saw at a plant nursery near Bangkok. I mean, it was big. It's like this big, it's very, very big. Um, and then the grower took some of them off to give to me. Um, so these are just two little intermediate plants. Now you can imagine, actually these will start to grow and um, they're on the influence, of the influence of the mother plant. So there's the original flower of the mother plant. And here's the flower spike the growing on the flower spike, uh, which is unusual for air plants. There are not many that grow in that way. Um, but you can imagine that as, it, as these start to flower year after year, and put out a long inflorescence that will have pups along it, uh, you can start to get these intermediates growing into a large bush, which is very nice to see indeed. Here's one original intermedia. That's a bigger one. Look. So again, I mean, one of the points I, I like to make to people is that um, you can know quite a bit about some of the uh, some of the species here, but the reality is that. Uh, with, even within the species there is a lot of variation um, so your stricta may not bloom the same colour as my stricta or it may have slightly different leaves than the one I have your gerati may look slightly different um, there are many many hybrids right so I often see people in uh, social media groups saying does anybody know what this plant is and they'll put up some pictures of various ionanthus and so on um, sometimes you can tell because the form is fairly obvious, but a lot of the time it's not very easy to tell unless you've got the plant in front of you. And even then it's not always very obvious. Sometimes it's easier when they bloom. So there you go, that's the second video on species and variations and I've explained some of the, the hybrids in there as well. I hope you found that useful. Please subscribe to my channel uh, if you like this sort of information and like it. And if you want to learn more about air plants, then uh, consider buying my book, Air Plant Magic, which is on Amazon.com. Okay, bye for now. Thank you.